Rub up your engines! Funky Monkey Scotty, I drive an Audi 2015 A6 with only 15,000 miles. I was gifted the car reliability wise. Can I trust it or should I look somewhere else? They're one of the highest maintenance cars in the world, right? But let's look at it logically. The baby's only got 15,000 miles. Even Audis generally don't fall apart till they get 60, 70, 80, 100,000 miles or more. You got it for nothing. Now, on the other hand, let's say you can find some fool who'll give you good money for that car because people are getting a lot of money for used cars and go buy a Toyota or a Honda and you won't have any worries because it's the time now people are buying all kinds of cars, the coronavirus nonsense, the prices have gone up. You might find some knuckle. And I even had a customer with one. They went to like Carmex and Carmex gave them like 15 grand for a car wouldn't have given them four grand for so if you can get money for that Audi get it now then get a Toyota or Honda and you won't be worried about the future Shodman says Scotty I'm from Manitoba why are the car prices in Canada so high use 2016 six with 110,000 kilometers going for 18 to 20 grand as a student I need a car please suggest me something well yeah you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place the prices in Canada always have been somewhat higher and unfortunately your country is starting to get into hyperinflation your government's just printing more money out the coronavirus has knocked the heck out of the Canadian economy the last time I looked the Canadian dollar was worth like 71 American cents and it used to be worth more than the American dollar so you guys are in a rough position there's no arguing that you got to get a car my advice is look at Toyotas and Hondas get an old beater that maybe you know the fenders are bashed in or it's rusty or stuff but you're going to have to set your sights a little bit lower than a 2016. For you're in Manitoba I know people in Toronto they say they're going for even higher up there so you know you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place maybe you might think get a bus pass instead it'd probably be a lot cheaper than buying a car these days haunted ontario so scotty i'm from niagara falls what do you think of 2020 kia forte well i'm from niagara falls too but the other side the southern side not the northern side now the kias are okay vehicles they're not great they're not totally horrendous I personally would not buy one. Toyotas and Hondas last so much longer and have so fewer problems. You can get used Kias generally a lot cheaper than you can Toyotas and Hondas. And if you're talking about lower miles, generally the Kias don't fall apart till they get 100, 140,000 miles on them. So if you've got one that's lower enough miles, you get a decent price. Maybe not a bad deal. Not my personal choice, but a lot of times beggars can't be choosers if you can get a better price on a vehicle that's okay and has lower mileage it can still last for quite some time now so scotty what do you think of the 2010 jeep patriot the patriots were a cheaper made car when jeeps started making cheaper cars to popularize on their name not the greatest vehicles i mean people like them because they're jeeps and they look cool and all that but over time they just don't hold up. If you can get a used one cheap enough with low enough mileage, maybe you can have some fun with it. Because it is a 2010, it's 12-year-old vehicle, right? But if you're going to buy a used Patriot, you got to pay a mechanic like me to check it out with a fine-tooth comb. See what kind of shape it's in. Because if the engine or tranny's going out, you want to run away from that thing. You don't even think about buying it. John Doe says, Scotty, is it safe to clean the oxygen sensor with carbon cleaner or something else? Oxygen sensors measure the amount of residual oxygen in your exhaust to make your engine run the correct air-fuel ratio. They are self-cleaning. You generally you don't have to do anything to them. If you pulled off an oxygen sensor and you saw it was covered with carbon, that's not your problem. Your problem is your engine's wearing out and it's throwing carbon into the exhaust system. Cleaning it isn't going to help much. It would be baked on. They're made so that they last quite some time, even with a little bit of residue on them. But a little cleaner, I'm going to do a squat to those things. They're made to take a lot of stuff. And if they do go bad and they get all carboned up, you got worse problems than your sensor. You got problems with the engine flat wearing out. You generally don't have to do anything to them at all. If you're an off-road, you go off-road and they get covered with mud. They have holes on them that have to take the ambient air to mix them. Yeah, you want to clean all that crap off. You wouldn't want to have holes plugged with mud. But the actual inside part that the exhaust's on that doesn't reach the outside air, it really doesn't need cleaning. Leon Yu says, 2004 BMW X3, any thoughts? Yeah, I'll give you some thoughts. Probably one of the biggest money pit cars ever produced when i did a gig with cbs tv in houston one of the anchors had one he had it for about six months he said it was the worst car he ever had he was throwing money in it left right and center it just wasn't because he was from philly you know everybody in philly complains about everything i mean they'll boo their team and then cheer them later in the same game they are endless money pits you know the big suvs oh they're cool everybody wants them they're the big yuppie car to drive around in but they don't hold up they cost a fortune to maintain, and their resale values drop like a stone. You can buy used ones cheap, 
But that's why you can buy them cheap, because they're money pits. Kyle says, Scotty, what's the reliability of the Chevy Impel engine's 3.6 variable valve timing direct fuel injection? Well, the interesting thing is the engines are relatively reliable, but the direct fuel injection system is not. They've had problems with the high pressure fuel pump breaking down. I mean, that thing does 1,500 PSI or more. It does insane amounts of pressure, and they break and leak. They've started fires and stuff. The injectors don't seem to hold up all that well. The engines themselves are okay. They just went to that direct injection to get better gas mileage ratings to appease the federal government, to have more horsepower in a smaller engine, and to build them somewhat cheaper. They're a simpler system. They have less parts to them. There's a lot of reasons behind it, and a lot of those reasons aren't all that good. Would you rather have a car that has fuel injectors that run at like 45 PSI or one that runs at, you know, 1,800 PSI? All that extra pressure, guess what? It breaks as it ages. And of course, it's dangerous because it's super high pressure. And if you get a leak, that gasoline is going to spray all over the place and go ba boom. A normal car, the pressure isn't that high. It's not too bad. But I know, did you ever get a leak? Wahoo. It'll go up in flames real fast. The truth says, Scotty, 2016 Ford Fusion 1.5 liter EcoBoost. Any thoughts? Yeah, I think they stink. I did one in uh, Rhode Island when I was there. And I told the guy, I said, your engine's just worn out. He had taken it to Ford for a bunch of times, spent thousands of dollars. It wouldn't pass the state emissions test. So I got my fancy scanner started putting on. I showed him. I said, look, the cams are worn out. I said, you got that GDI fuel injection system running at over 1,000 PSI. You got turbocharger on it. That puts more and more pressure on the internal parts of the engine. It's a little bitty 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine. And guess what? It's going to wear out too fast. That's just how those things are. I would not buy one. They're trying to get too much horsepower out of a tiny little engine and it works okay when they're new but then they wear out faster and then you're stuck with a car that well are you going to put thousands and thousands of something that really probably isn't going to last you got an engine that's broken and you fix it generally you're lucky if you get 40 50 percent of the mileage you got out of the original engine if you fix the engine after it broke. So it's not that wise to put money in those things when they do go out. Andre Gomez says, Scotty, is it bad to let my car idle for three to four minutes? I got a diesel Peugeot and here in Portugal, it's so cold, I do it every time. It doesn't really hurt it, it is a diesel. Diesels go by what? Compression ignition, they don't have spark plugs, right? That's why they have glow plugs that glow to start it up when it's cold. So it is a good idea to run a diesel. Three, four minutes, it's not gonna hurt anything. It actually helps everything warm up. Gasoline cars, they really don't need it. Everything's computer controlled and they start up warm up real fast. But the diesels, it's a very good idea to do it with a diesel and just, you know, continue doing it. You're not gonna hurt anything. Actually, if you start a diesel up right fast and then rev it to the rev line, you, you could damage it that way because it's not warmed up yet. And since it fires all the fuel, not with a fire from a spark plug and gasoline burning, but from the pure compressed pressure on the diesel and heat, you really want it warmed up before you drive it hard. Davison says, Scotty, you're home okay after the storms in Tennessee? Oh yeah, it was, was kind of interesting. By now I hear these big military voices saying, Seek shelter immediately. It's like Big Brother because we're just a mile down the road from the 101st Airborne main gate. So we get all this military warning stuff too. Rather than heating it, my wife stayed in bed in the cellar. I went upstairs and looked outside. And I looked outside and I knew there was a tornado around because the leaves were all going straight up counterclockwise. So they were being sucked into the tornado. And the cat flap that normally if it's windy will blow in, it was being sucked out at a 90 degree angle. So I knew there was a tornado around. But luckily for us, it was a whole three miles away by the highway. And it was only the little EF1 that hit Clarksville. Didn't really do all that much damage. It was more out in the fields, out in the highway. Didn't do anything. But my next door neighbor, on the other hand, he was by Kentucky Lake, and he was hunting in a hunting lodge. Got to send him a text at midnight. I guess they were playing poker or so something. said, get out of there fast. So he did. Minutes later, here comes the big one, the one that went through Mayfield, the one that went 200-something miles on the ground. He's 1,500 yards away, he said. He has hands on his ears. He was just going deaf. The noise was so loud. It was starting to suck the guys in. There were 15 of them. They're hanging on the trees. He said, in three minutes, it was all over. They drove back. There was no more lodge. The only thing there were a bunch of hunting dogs, and they were sniffing for their owners. Now, unfortunately, four of the guys at the lodge, I guess, I don't know, maybe they were drunk and they fell asleep, and they're not going to wake up if they're drunk and falling asleep. Or they just fell asleep and they didn't hear anything. They were killed. They found their bodies later down the road because there wasn't anything left at the lodge. So it, it was dangerous. I thought it was really something where I was. The windows were shaking in and out. But I was three miles away from the little bit of EF1, not the big giant one that went through Mayfield. So it was something to see, I got to say. I saw the glow in the distance and the wind and everything. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.